Hey everybody, Will Alexander from Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips, brought to you by Canine Chronicle TV. Today on the interview chair, we have International Aubrey Judge, Mr. Robert Dawson, also a pug enthusiast. Um, so sit back and enjoy. Hi everybody. Today we have the pleasure of, in the interview chair, we have Mr. Robert Dawson, originally from Australia, now living in Korea. How are you, Bob? It's good to see you. Yeah, it's great, Will. It's uh, been a long time since I saw you. Yeah, uh, I remember being in, the ring, in the ring last year sometime. Yeah, well, uh, been in, years ago, at Erie Shores, maybe. Erie Shores, yeah, maybe Erie Shores. Yeah, uh, yeah. so I was in Canada, I think, uh, last year, about two years ago. Well, we like having you, so... <laughs> How are things there? Yeah, it's great. Uh, career, of course, I've been here because of COVID for the last uh, six to eight months. We've, I've not left the country. However, you know, we have had a dog show here. We, had, uh, we have dog shows regularly. And uh, I did judge here. I uh, had a very good entry and uh, some nice dogs. Oh, so, you know, it's the dog world is continuing quite nicely. Um, but I think overall, uh, you know, the place has... Uh, progressed on much faster in the last few years. I first came to Korea um, maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago to judge. And uh, I've been here now, living here now six years, and it's much more active in the dog world than really? it was 15 years ago, yeah. much more. Oh, really? Yes. Mm. Well, it's good to hear the dog world is still moving over there. Mm. All right, I'm gonna get right into it, Bob. Tell me how you first got involved in dogs. Well, you know, I come from Australia. Yep. And uh, maybe Australia is pretty similar to Canada uh, in some ways, is that, and I come from rural Australia, um, in a place called Rockhampton, which is a small city on the Tropic of Capricorn. And basically, I was involved for many, many years in breeding and showing poultry, and particularly bantams. Uh, and I did a lot. I started off when I was four years old. Wow. With my, and uh, I did that for many, many years, all throughout my high school years. And uh, in fact, all throughout my primary school, as well, high school years. Um, and of course, in Australia also, most um, judges, because you don't really have a chance to uh, have individual judges for poultry and dogs and cats. So many of the judges in those days that have the same judge. Uh, oh. and, and they would do one each day. One, you know, dog. It was always in. <laughs> I think it was cats on Tuesday, uh, dogs on Wednesday, and chooks on Friday, type thing. So they got, and they come and do the whole lot. And there was a very famous judge there called Billy Duckworth, and he's been. He was well known in Australia. He he was the you know he's been dead many years now, but he was very famous, and. Uh, you know, he kind of enthused me to also get into dogs as well. Um, and a very close friend of his, an old guy named Taffy Jones, uh, who lived nearby Rockhampton, he, he bred and showed uh, pugs, um, uh, but also German shepherds. He was, he was one of the last people to bring in German shepherds into Australia from England. You know, of course, they were banned for many, many years. Oh, I did think, yeah, you couldn't bring them in. And so he was one of the last ones. So he had a quite a nice line of the old English type German shepherds. Uh, but he also had poultry and bantams. And so basically I got involved with him and he also had pugs, which of course became my breed eventually. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, they're not really mentors, but they're really just friends or, uh, you know, they have the kid around to, to, to look at the dogs or look at the chooks. And so eventually you learn things and you, you find out about such things as showing. But basically, I started off in, in showing uh, poultry, particularly bantams. And uh, I always remember one of my famous, I, I did win best in show once uh, with a, uh, a, a bantam, which was under Billy Duckworth. So, you know, it's, it's a, it was an exciting young life at that time uh, to, do, to be involved with animals as well and, and to involve... I worked with adults as well because, you know, one of the things I found great about that was that I, in fact, 
um, would attend all of the uh, chook club meetings and the dog club, all these different meetings, where, you know, I was the youngest person there, but at least I, I learned how to communicate with the, the, the other groups. And it, and it helped me, even today, I, I look back on that, uh, particularly with dog shows. I, I, the part I love, love about dog shows most as a judge is sitting around after the dog show, talking to the to the experienced and old and different other judges, different breed judges, and just talking about things which, you know, you, you'd never think about, you'd never read in a book. Uh, yeah, that's how you uh, learn. You know. and you, that's the way you learn. Right. Yeah, and, and I find that still very much today. I so missed that part of it. Sorry. Yeah. How yeah. old were you at that point? How old were you, Bob, when you, when you, when you were attending these meetings? And Oh, when I started, I started when I was seven or eight years old. Wow. Uh, yeah, and then I, I eventually went to university at uh, 17. Um, you know, I was, uh, I was one of these ones who finished high school rather fast, and I was at university. So I went to university and uh, in a place called Townsville. It's not nearby, but the thing is, after I went to university, uh, I decided to leave Australia, and, uh, and I went to a place called Papua New Guinea, and I went to Papua New Guinea, and, of course, that was you couldn't really do uh, anything with chickens or with dogs or anything really. It's a, it's quite different. Um, and what so drew you there. Mm, you don't mind me asking. Uh, uh, yeah, I was um, originally I, I was a volunteer teacher. So you know, I, you know, like a lot of like a lot of Australians and Canadians, I'm sure they kind of when they finish their university, they like to go and explore the world. And exploring the world, of course, is quite quite interesting if you can go very close to your home, but still be exploring the world. Because Papua New Guinea is, and still is, quite different to Australia. Um, but I enjoyed it a lot, and I stayed there for quite a few years. Um, and I, I basically got to understand different cultures and different ways of handling people and ideas. And that really decided me on becoming a, uh, like an international civil servant type person, or international uh, worker. Um, and that's and so after I finished in Papua New Guinea, I went to the Philippines, and I uh, stayed there for many many years, twenty eight years. Wow! In the Philippines, I, I was there. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I look a lot uh, younger than I am. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I, I was there for twenty eight years, uh, and uh, enjoy, enjoyed it a lot, and of course got very actively involved in the the dog world. Um, and uh, right from the very beginning, I was there. And as I said, you know, I was into pugs uh, quite early on and uh, then got involved in clubs and and different other things. So it was kind of like, uh, you know, quite an interesting period also at the very beginning. Because at that time, of course, was politically, Philippines was not very stable at that time. Um, you know, we had, uh, I think there were some like, uh, 12 coup d'etats in about 10 years or something like that. There was a you know, there was, there was, a, was Marcos, when Marcos was thrown out. Now, because Marcos was very, very into dogs, his daughters were. Oh, he had, that. yes, he, he had, his his daughters had some extremely good pugs. Um, they, they had some very good dogs. They used to be very much involved in the dog world. Um, but, of course, they left <laughs> when um, Marcos left. And, uh, but uh, so it, it's the actual um, Philippines uh, had a very long history of dogs. Um, in, in the dog club in Philippines was one of the very first to start in Asia. Um, and it was actually organized by the Americans who were there. As you must you know, even when I was there, the Americans were thousands and thousands and thousands of Americans because they had all the bases. Mm. But the Americans there created the the... Uh, dog club uh, in, in the 60s, early 60s, and they basically uh, created the club and uh, and uh, also had got a lot of local people involved, some of them still there now. And so they basically developed the whole dog world. That's and actually, I, yeah, one, I was judging the states maybe oh, 20, 10, 15 years ago, and I was doing um, uh, the chows. And uh, I met the person came and said to me, "Oh, you know, he was involved in the in the Philippine club when in 1964 or something. Uh, you know, it's, there was this, this long tradition of the of the of the U.S. and 
um, in the Philippines, in the dog world as well. Um, and so, you know, it was very, very interesting to see that. So your pugs, tell me how you got started in your pugs. Well, pugs, as I said, uh, Taffy Jones had pugs. Was that your first breed to show was the pugs then? Um, to show, yes. I, I, I had, um, uh, like every Australian has, is a fox terrier. Um, everybody has a foxy. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and of course, we've, we, you know, we had various dogs. Uh, but actually, my very close friend, who kind of like we were born together, um, she has had corgis all her life and still has corgis today. She still shows corgis very well. Um, so I, I grew up a bit with corgis as well. Um, you know, she'd take her corgis to the dog show and I'd take the chooks to the chook show type thing. Um, so, but, uh, so, but basically, yes, for showing was the pug. And, um, you know, I was very lucky because I got in contact with some very good pug people. Um, you know, of course, I, um, I, I knew, um, you know, the US had, in my mind, some of the best pugs. Some, of course, in England, I also liked, but I felt that the quality at that time, 20, 30 years ago, was really in the uh, East Coast pugs in the, in, in the US. Um, so I, I eventually contacted Charlotte Patterson, mm -hmm. and I got, I got one of her dogs uh, called Manny, uh, general manager his name was, and he did a lot of winning for me and he was, did a nice job. And so Charlotte, uh, uh, you know, and uh, husband Edward, of course, now has passed. Um, I got to know them very well. And I, in fact, visited them many times uh, in, in the US. And um, I also got to know uh, people around them. And I, of course, Harry Smith, I also oh, yeah, no. had a And Harry, of course, came to the Philippines. I invited him over to the judge. And uh, he had a great time over there judging. Um, He's a wonderful uh, dog man, Dr. Harry. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, yes, yeah. he um, of course, yeah, he must have died one time. I mean, quite a few years ago now. Um, but he, he, yeah, he was very good. And, and I got to know him very well and learned a lot from him. So, you know, these are the, the pugs I got, uh, many US pugs. I did also look at getting, and I did have some, I did show some Australian pugs. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, they were more the English type, um, you know, and so, but uh, I, I was quite eager to, tried to develop my own lines of pugs. And so I developed over quite a short period of time, some nice breedings. Uh, and then I found the black pug. Um, you know, I, I always had fawns and then I, I didn't, for some reason or other, I didn't really go for black. But then I found blacks and I, I find black pugs so much different in personality because they're much easier to care for because of the coats different and, and uh, you know, but, uh, so the black pugs, of course, have always amazed me. Oh, I didn't know the difference. I didn't know there was a difference in the colors. I knew, that, like, obviously blacks, but I didn't realize there was a difference in their personalities or temperaments. Oh, absolutely. Color. Absolutely. It's like, like the dachshunds, you know, because the dachshunds, each duck, the three types of dachshunds all have different personalities. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, one thing I decided when I was going to become a judge um, was that I would at least have um, experience in each of the groups with a dog which I lived with and and even if I could possibly even, even you know uh, take forward and breed and things like that and so I chose uh, various breeds that I really felt I needed to understand not just simply from the point of view of a um, of, a, of, of the standard but also the whole the whole dog the way they act their, their attitude how they're supposed to be in in the in the ring as well as out and so um that's part of know, as far as i'm concerned you know. yes yes of course yeah very much so but to live and live and be with the dogs as opposed to, you know, as a handler you do that as well but uh, i've found many uh judges haven't done that many judges in the more traditional countries like australia or even in um places in england places the judges have only ever had one breed and that's you know that's what they see that one breed 
um, because they can do that, of course, in Europe. Of course, you can, in Europe, you do 65 dogs a day, that's all, you know, when you're critiquing. So you can judge forever by just having two or three breeds uh, in judging. Um, but in other countries like Australia, you can't do that. Australia is like Canada. Most shows in Australia uh, have 50, 60, 80 dogs, 100 dogs, you know, in the, very, in the country places. In fact, a lot of those country shows have now stopped because they just don't have any, any um, exhibitors. So, you know, in, in, it depends on each country, but I, I still feel that the judges need to understand the dog from the, from the essence of what it is in, in the house, and in, the, in, the, in the yard type thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I did uh, with pugs, of course, I, I've had, had them all the time. But then other breeds I've had, also in that sense uh, in the time um, but most of the dogs I've had uh, of course all the dogs I have I, I, I keep my dogs forever <laughs> type thing I, I am in fact I have a, a place in Philippines still I have a house there uh, a villa and uh, where I still have all my dogs oh, my good. dogs still live there yeah um, so you know it's um, kind of, you know, once you get the dogs, because it's very difficult to, to, to let them go. I know some people do, but I'm not into that. And so we have the dogs here in, in the Philippines. Um, but uh, yeah, so pugs were the original. And actually, I, I still love the pugs a lot, but I said the black pug is my favorite. How old were you when you first started judging, Bob? Uh, in my 30s, something. Yeah. Yeah. So, what was, what was the first show you judged? Uh, first show I judged, you know, in in, the, in um, under my training scheme, of course, you start with one breed, and then work up. So I did, uh, you know, local shows, uh, but then also I did shows in at the time when I was doing judging. One of the issues that I have and I still have with a lot of a lot of training of judges is that they don't get the exposure to breeds that the, and dogs that they don't see each week. Um, and so what we did was at that time, I organized with uh, somebody who was in Thailand and we kind of swapped judges at that time. So basically um, we would go to Thailand, a Philippine judge go to Thailand and then some Thai would come to Australia, uh, sorry, to, um, to the Philippines. So the idea was to try and get people, expose them to, to dogs that they'd never seen before. Yeah, these country has their breeds that they're strong in, so it's definitely, yeah. it's interesting yeah. that aspect mm. of it. That's a good idea. Yeah, uh, and I think in Asia that's happening a lot more nowadays. In Asia it's become much more of a, um, you know, the, led by the FCI group, the Asia FCI group, and uh, they're doing a lot of work on trying to get the you know, judges, up, you know, local judges. Because you know, in China, of course, they've also been very proactive on getting judges. You know, I've judged a lot in Ch China, and um, every time you go to China, you also do um, uh, discussions with judges, and you have them in the ring with you, and this type of thing as well. So it, it's happening very, very. In China, of course, you know the number of uh, um, dogs that they'll eventually have. Uh, they have to have local judges. I don't, they just couldn't afford, I don't think, to bring in foreign judges all the time. And so they're doing that quite regularly now. Um, and there's some very good judges developing in, in China as well. Yeah, I was um, there about five years ago, and it was moving along really well. And they had some good dogs yeah. when I was there. So yeah, Most breeds, you know, yeah, yeah. They strong. have this, they have like a lot of lot of countries. You have you get end up getting a, a few jo dogs at the top area, and then and then you might not get so much down below. So it, it, it's 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 happening in all these countries. Um, but, uh, you know, because the Philippines had the longest history of dogs, as long as Japan, and now and then Thailand's developed a lot. India's been going for many, many years. Uh, India has some very good uh, breeds as well, their own local breeds. I did a show there actually in February, just before the, the uh, COVID closed down. Mm -hmm. And I did uh, a lot of uh, big numbers of, of the local dogs around um, uh, Tamil Nadu in the south. Um, we, uh, um, we did, um, you know, this, the, the kind of 
the, it's called, I think, uh, the caravan dogs and things of like that. They had various breeds, but I had a large number of them, I think nearly a hundred local breed dogs, as well as all the, all the British breeds and American breeds. Yeah, because in India, uh, in, in my part world, anyway, I see a lot of Irish setters and beagles and, and I, because they send me, or they, they, I'm friends with a lot of them on Facebook, so I see a lot of their dogs. Their dogs look good too. They're doing a good job in preparing them and, and, and looks like even type-wise they're doing a good job. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, of course, the longer term British link as well. So you get, you tend to, have some, but there's been a few American dogs, North American dogs coming through. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's also some of the Brazilian dogs. And, you know, it's a quite a mixture, uh, but they also have very good German shepherds. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, when I was in the Philippines, uh, Philippines had a very long history of uh, the German Shepherd, uh, particularly with the um, the German club, um, and uh, so we used to judge by that standard. Um, so you know, you, you know, there's all this running around type thing, and much more of the uh, German style. Um, but in Indonesia, we used to do that for Dobermans. Rottweilers and German Shepherds, um, the Seeger type shows for all, all three working dogs. But um, here, of course, uh, in, as in Korea and most parts of Asia, they just don't have the, the, the working dogs, they're mostly having the, the smaller dogs. As, um, as a judge, because you've judged all over the world, do you have certain dogs that are, that are stuck in your head, in your mind's eye, that, that you wished you could have either been part of or owned? Um, you know, there, there was, strangely enough, there is one dog, I, I, don't know, I don't know its name or whatever, but many, many years ago, I judged in Germany at, the, um, at a very big show there, uh, and I did Shih Tzu, Shih Tzu, and this Shih Tzu just came into the ring and it just, it was a black and white, it just floated the ring. No, no strike, it was loose handled, it just simply floated around the ring. It, as though the body wasn't even uh, there. Just, a, just a, it was unbelievable. I always remember that dog. And unfortunately, since I've seen that dog, whenever I see a Shih Tzu, I will compare it against that dog. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the sense of, you know, the standard, but yeah, but the black sheep, the other dog, which I really, um, really, really kind of, uh, got to appreciate in my mind, um, was a, a dog I judged in, um, 2002. Uh, now I don't know if I remember this dog because of the timing or not, but I was in West Virginia. And that uh, just in 20, because the, um, I, I just actually showed the dog in late 2001, a 9-11. You know, um, I, I happened to be in Washington, D.C. for work. And, and also I was going to do a dog show as well. In, and I did the dog. So I was able to take the train uh, from Washington, D.C. Um, to Connecticut area and things like that. Anyway, but basically I, I went there and... I gave uh, best in show to a magnificent, what I thought was a magnificent um, miniature black poodle. And, uh, you know, the name was, was Surrey Spice Girl. Oh, so, yes, of course, yes. And then the following year, she won Westminster. Yeah. That dog, I could not believe it when I saw it. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And I, I gave her the uh, best in show and um you know so she was the, you know so th these are the two dogs that i really remember judging um having, of course seeing other dogs i've seen many dogs um that i really appreciate a lot um and you know i have done shows also in 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 uh, england as well and and an another dog I, I really liked was a uh several of the whippets in England. I am very much, I, I think that they've got the, a nice part to them. I've also judged, of course, a lot of Basenjis. Mm -hmm. I have a Basenji and 
uh, and um, I, I la last year, yeah, I judged uh, the Canadian Basenji Nationals. Yeah, I the was there. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and the Australian. I did the Australian Basenji Nationals as well last year. Um, so I did the two two lots of Basenji Nationals uh, in in the, in that time. Yeah, so it, it, it's it's uh, it's quite nice. Um, I do like I do prefer doing and do like doing um, uh, specialty shows. Mm -hmm. um, I know doing all breed shows is is the norm in most for all breed judges. Um, you know, one year in in two thousand something two four or five, I remember I did seven thousand dogs. I judged seven thousand dogs that year. Oh wow! <laughs> in 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 I think in all. Uh, I think five continents. So you're um, for all groups then, Bob? Yeah. Um, I've been, uh, been all breeds for a while now. But I, you know, uh, also for the US, uh, AKC, and then also FCI uh, as well. But, you know, of course, um, as you right, 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 right said, you end up doing certain breeds because those are popular in each country type thing. And in Asia, it's very similar. The breeds that you do, um, but I do like doing even, you know, um, uh, I did a, I once did a a, a specialty, uh, uh, the Russian Terrier, toy te Russian toy Terrier. Okay. Uh, and uh, I don't know if they're recognised in so, Canada. Yet. No, they are no. So, but anyway, they are now in Australia and many, many other countries, but. Um, at that time, I did it in, in Moscow. I was, I think, 1990-something. I did uh, a show in Moscow, and uh, I did them, and I had literally, you know, they, they were everywhere. I think there must have been a <laughs> hundred of them. And um, I don't know if you know the breed well, but no, the, breed, the breed has yet to stabilise, shall we say. Um, and so <laughs> um, it's it's got a lot of different types um, and depending you know it's variation is there and so um, you know I, I really felt that I had to just go for a certain style and uh, but uh, I found some very nice ones there were some extremely nice ones there but the issue is that there was so much variation but yeah. doing a specialty like that it really makes your mind you know go in um, at that same sh that same time I did a I did the um, the another quite other there was actually a um, Neapolitan Mastiff. I didn't do it, but there was a Neapolitan Master specialty there as well, and there were about 160 of them, wow. and I, I really enjoyed uh, those seeing them. Um, so you didn't very, judge those; you just watched those. You yeah 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 that'd be a, that'd be something to see a hundred of those or a hundred more of them. Yeah. Wow. We used to have in the Philippines. Uh, there was a guy who bred them in the Philippines, and we would get twenty um 20 or 30 of them um and uh, yeah it's uh, yeah they're, they're they're actually quite a nice dog um you know so it, it each place has its own breeds um you know the tibetan mastiffs in in india and the ones in china of course are quite different mm -hmm. um and the tibetan mastiffs uh, i i was in um outside just outside um the, um, uh, the in Lahore is in Pakistan, uh, and so uh, uh, on the other side is very is basically the other side of um, is uh, in India, uh, um, and there's a person there who breeds absolutely beautiful Tibetan mastiffs, um, and he was in partnership with somebody in the U.S. Unfortunately, she died. But he, he has a lot of his dogs in the US as well. And uh, I spent a lot of time going over the dogs and in, in his kennel, um, his grand kennel. Um, but uh, again, you know, it's good to be able to be out, go to breeders like this, especially these breeds, which are not as popular everywhere else, mm -hmm. and just go over, over them. So as a judge, you've always got to find, uh, you know, opportunity uh, and, and take opportunity as it comes to get to know breeds better uh, in each area, um, which I find very, very, very important. Well, I think uh, that once you're in this sport, you're a student for life, it seems, so. Exactly, 
Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, that's why one thing, you know, I've told other, uh, the younger judges when we, we get together is I said, you'll never stop learning. You know, every day you will go to a dog show and you will uh, understand something better. Yeah. You might understand, you might have understood it before, but you understand it better when you, you know, either talk to somebody or you get to feel something or do something, um, you know, and I think also people have to realise you can't, judge from outside the ring <laughs> you know people people think oh you know you can judge from outside the ring there's no way oh, yeah. you know i'm much more of a hands-on hands -on person yeah and it's, it's interesting because you'll you'll watch a large even when you are watching and i'll sit and watch a large specialty and things start to click you start to see what the essence of the breed is and you start it starts to click yeah. in your mind what you think you should be looking for so yeah i went to the to do that a few years ago I, a long time, long time ago, I went to the Louisville circuit. Oh, that's and, a, that's uh, uh, and Dalmatians, a thousand, and took about a thousand <laughs> one Dalmatian. They had, I think they said they had you know, 20 or 30 uh, national specialties or something. Yeah. I, uh, the, uh, the, the, I went to, I looked at, spent a lot of time with the Dalmatian one, but also with the others as well. It's quite uh, other specialties, there were some quite nice dogs. Um, a, until you judge there then? No, no, I just went. I actually, I just went there to see it. Okay. I was judging. I was judging somewhere else, and in the states, and then I kind of just dropped by. <laughs> uh, what have been day. some of your most memorable assignments then? Uh, you know, every assignment I find exciting. I, I that's good. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, you know, one thing I've learned is that in fact, one thing which was told to me many, many years ago is it doesn't matter if it's in the middle of nowhere, uh, those people have paid the same money to bring their dog for your opinion. So you've got to give them the same as you give somebody at a big top-notch show. Um, and I, I, I realise that many times over that you, you know, uh, like I, I always, if, if a club asks me to come and it's in the middle of nowhere, I always accept it. I don't, I don't care about, you know, you know, I know some people, feel that, you know, it's a, it's the same old show, but it's not every show is different and every show has people who really want to have a show. So uh, yeah. it's always, you know, mm. uh, that's sort of when I was as a handler, as a young handler, I was given some advice and it was by uh, Jane Forsyth. And she always told me that I showed primarily up here in Canada. And she said, a best in show was a best in show, no matter where you are, because by the end of the day, they usually end up with seven or really good dogs and when you win that best show it could be over a hundred dogs or over a thousand dogs or two thousand dogs it's still a best of show and, and to appreciate that win no matter what so. yeah 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 i but having said that um you know i think what makes a show for a judge uh as opposed for an exhibitor or for a committee member is actually the is simply just the simplicity or the ease with which you're handled by the club mm -hmm. uh, the you know i think um people have, have got it on their mind the dogs they the judge has to, has to think through things there it is a stress it can be stressful and it can be physically stressful as well. and i think that you know judges appreciate clubs that actually say to them well you know do you really want to go out for dinner tonight on the, you know, if you're doing it, say, a two or three day show, yeah. or maybe we'll just have one dinner at the end of the thing or something like that. Um, I think this is always a, a, you know, there are some little things which some clubs have found and do. Um, they, you know, they don't try and feed you 500 different cakes and, you know, and all this stuff. That you, they, they appreciate that you are there to judge and that you, you know, you need a, some quiet time, some relaxation time outside the ring so you know so the club when when i judge when i think of clubs that i've judged with okay i think of the dogs but the exhibitors if they're good and you know friendly but also i think of the clubs and the clubs appreciate the judges needs um as much as the everybody else's needs mm -hmm. you know um I, I did judge in one country i won't name it um but i you know, it that it, the there was actually um, my daughter who you've probably met as well. But she came with me, um, and uh, we were in a um, in this country, 
the morning it had it was raining but of course the show started on time uh, nine o'clock uh, and I had 140 dachshunds to do and I had to had to uh, weigh weigh them oh yeah so it was a requirement then of course after I uh, you know after about an hour it started to uh hail hailstones came down <laughs> and and but we continued judging oh show must go on yeah show must go on and then and then of course it got it, the, the ground was so messy the dogs couldn't stand okay that was okay i don't mind i've i've judged in snow and i've judged everywhere else but then what happened was that so i finished judging in mid-afternoon because it took you know you had to critique everybody as well and things then, of course, uh, I said, oh, we, it looks, are we going to have any lunch then? <laughs> and I said, oh, oh, oh we're sorry. Uh, they had lunch before and all the food is gone. And then, <laughs> and then, and then they said, oh, and you're also going to be judging three groups as well, which they hadn't put on the, uh, hadn't told me before. So, you know, and so I always remember that show. I vaguely remember the dogs, but I but I do remember the things which you know would have made this made the day a little bit better for everybody. Um, so as a judge, you know, and I really like clubs that really appreciate their judges and and actually think think of the judges well. Sure. Um, you know, I, I've run I've run many many shows in the past, and one thing that I hope they can say is that they actually you know we did the right thing by them. By the judge, um, but yeah, you know, that's something which we we, we tend to find. But uh, well, I hope Canada looks after you well each time you come. Always, <laughs> always, <they> always do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I quite, uh, as I said, I've, you know, whenever I judge, I try to also um, you know find out what the dogs are in that area, this type of thing. Um, the other thing with which I always advise young judges on, or judges, other judges. Is do is it that when they go to a show, you have to judge to the standard, to the system, uh, and to the to the country's way. Um, I, I find some judges uh, basically spend a lot of time saying, "Oh, we should do it this way. We sh you know it should have been done that way because that's what we've done." It. You know why are they changed that? or this standard is different. And I think, um, you know, I spend a lot of time before I go to judging, I, I always read this, try to read all the standards in for that country, uh -huh. because, some, because they are quite different. Oh, um, very, very, you know, quite different from, even from Canada and the US. And, um, and so, you know, you, 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 you know you're, you're going there to judge the show. And the other thing is, is also the, but the system, um, you know, peop, you know, systems are there to, because they're regulated and all the rest of, you know, which dogs come in on time, you know, this sort of thing. So I, I've always felt that those are two big things that you, as a judge, you must just fundamentally accept. You've read the standards and you know the system of judging. Of that country. Um, I, I agree because you, we do get a lot of, we'll get some judges over from Europe and they'll, they'll almost fight you on things because it's not how it's done in their country. It's, yeah. It doesn't make for the, the day enjoyable at all sometimes. Uh, so. And also it upsets the ups, you know, what the other thing of course is I, as a judge, I notice a lot. It, you know, if the, if the handlers and the others in the, in, the, in the exhibitors are upset, the dogs will be upset. Mm -hmm. It goes straight down the line, well, yeah, no straight problem. down the lead. And and you'll see, and you won't get the best out of the dogs. And actually, ultimately, that's what a judge wants to do: is make sure the dogs, you know, show themselves in, effectively and all the rest. Um, and so that's very very important. Help them help them move it forward. Uh, and but it's keep to the to those basic standards. Um, yeah. You kind so of answered my question, but I was hoping, that, like, for the advice for young judges. You 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 touched on a lot of things. Is there anything else you would you would want to give them advice on? Um, How long have you been judging now, Bob? Uh, 
Yeah, actually, yeah, over 35 years now. Now I'm trying to add up how old you are, so you know, you know I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm getting there. Yeah, but um, yeah, you know, because I don't think of myself as an old judge. No, um, no I'm, I'm very active and young. And, um, but I, I think that uh, young judges, and you know, I've talked a lot of, about, when I talk about young judges here, um, I'm thinking of in Asia, you have a lot of judges, as I said, who have had limited experience on certain breeds. And that um, what they should do is, you know, and I think that also in some, even in Australia to a degree and others, it's getting that exposure to other breeds, um, you know, which is quite important. But, uh, but not simply a book learning, but, you know, actually going and touching the dogs and feeling and going over them and things like that. Now, in Australia, we used to have before, because, and still have, you know, these you know, shows where you, you know, open shows, I used to call them. Um, and I hear from a lot of people, they're not, not as popular as they were in the past and you know, not, maybe not getting the number of dogs and things. So you have to find a way that you can go to the breeders uh, and find them. Um, the other thing is that I think the big issue with young judges is that getting them to um, understand that they have to um, appreciate every dog that comes in the ring. You know, I'm, 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 you know, if judging styles are either positive or negative. You either start with zero and work up to 100, or you start with 100 and work down to zero. And different countries have different ways of doing it. I'm a zero upwards to 100 um, when I'm, you know, when I'm thinking through the dogs, uh, through the standard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's important that you understand what are all, you know, what are the four or five basic what makes that the breed? Uh, give that the weighting, and 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 work up that, and then then the other parts, the, the movement, or you know the various other you know so-called five parts of a, of a of a judging, you know everything from types through to, to temperament, etc. Um, so the idea is to move through those things that make that breed a breed, and then what what is the fine tuning of that? Uh, because basically every dog you you have to go over is you have to sort of in your mind how far is it towards the standard towards the hundred um and that's the way i, I work it um that's a very in, positive way of looking at it that's good i like that yeah it's so, it's yeah, so because, easy to you know, fall into a fault judging and, and just to, to work your way up and go through all the the virtues of the dog that's that sounds like the best way to yeah. think yeah, it, 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 it helps you because it makes you find the best dog, the best one which represents the breed standard. Um, whereas, you know, in other places, when you're going down the list with, you know, and saying, okay, it's got, uh, you know, uh, one missing tooth, so minus, or, you know, it's too many sub parts. Right. And, and you end up not necessarily with the best dog. Um, you might have had the dog which ticks off all the boxes, but maybe not the best overall dog because it, it doesn't have it doesn't bring out the best points. I agree. Um, I, I find I've always said that, that anybody, even sitting at ringside, can pick out what's wrong with most dogs, other than their mouth and whatnot. But yeah, well, it's, 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 that's not their your job is. Well, I feel a judge's job is to tell us what's good about the dog, not what's wrong with the dog. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's one thing I would tell them. Uh, the, the other thing is, which I think I'd still like to emphasize again, what I was saying before, is that you know know your standards really well, but don't just know the standard. What I did in the Philippines for many years, we used to run tr training courses um, for all the judges and exhibitors together, and uh, and we'd get many of the old specialist judges who would come in, or the judges who would come in specialist judges. And they do give a lecture on their particular breed, and you know there are many breeds which colour can be very very um, difficult to understand. Um, and uh, unless you understand that colour, you also are not going to because you know the colour of course of, of a breed has been determined for a certain reason, especially in the hunting breeds and few you know mm. so. 
So the issue is that understanding those fine points, not that there is a colour, you know, there's a fawn or whatever, whatever. It, it's actually, you know, what is that colour? Uh, what are you looking for in a, in a proper conditioned coat and things like that? So those types of things are quite critical for a judge to get, uh, every judge. Uh, but newer judges have to go and listen and talk about that. Um, you know, you know, the, uh, you know, the thing like, for example, for poodle is what is a silver poodle? You know, um, it might sound very simple, it's silver. But actually, if you really talk to a really, the, the, the poodle, poodle people, silver has a very set, re, you know, understanding. It's not, it's not a, a dark white or a light blue. You know, so, you know, you, you can get, so you have to know how, what they want, uh, what the breeders are, have done for many, many years and developed as a judge. Um, because, and, you know, and you only have two, you only have two minutes or even less than that in some cases to actually do the judging. Well, exactly. So, you need, and that's, that would be my third biggest one, which I think is the biggest peeve for many exhibitors. Um, is judges who take too long to come to the wrong decision. Um, you know, I've seen judges uh, in some places where they've sent a dog around 14 times, um, you know, and, it, you know, the, the exhibitors, everybody else, you know, if you make it, you you, know, you, you, you have to, again, because you're not looking at the upwards, you're looking at, the, you're trying to find fault as I'm opposed to... Trying to talk yourself out of something. So. Yeah, so so it's very very important for judges to also keep good timing, um, to understand timing and to keep good timing, um, and, and actually to a degree that's why I like having I like doing specialties. I like spending more time with <laughs> the same breed because you know, I, I suppose the last thing which is I, I reiterated before was the problem is basically you have a situation where judges are under a lot of stress in the ring and they're under more stress if they've got 25 different breeds coming in in one hour you know just thinking of the of the standards for each breed mm -hmm. so you know get used to that um but because that's going to be the realities of most judges uh but but always look forward to doing a nice specialty and then you can you know really really right. go into it in detail mm. like a, a, a very famous judge once told me we were talking about a certain judge that was taking too long and she turned to me and she said, they don't get any better, William, they just get older. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been, I've, I've been, I've unfortunately done two shows um, where one in England and one in Australia, where the judges were, sorry, not in England, it was in, no, it was in, in Holland, in, in, in um, it was the Rotterdam show. Rotterdam and, 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 and uh, and Australia, in Sydney, where, you know, basically I was told, okay, because I'd finished my thing, they actually just took the, took the final breeds off both judges uh, because they were just too slow. They wouldn't get to the finish. And so um, one of them was even worse than that. One of them, I did her final set of breeds and then I also did her group and she still hadn't finished. And then she came across after, and her, her group had already, <laughs> I'd already done the group. Um, but you know, it's not a very nice thing. But the thing is, it's, the clubs in some countries just do that. It's, there's just no, no mucking around. Yeah. They can't afford to, to have basically people there till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. It just doesn't work that way. Um, and so basically they, they will just take the dogs off the judges. That's interesting. Um, I, I wish we could do that over here sometimes, but we can't. <laughs> <laughs> if you, I have a question for you, Bob. If you could have dinner with a, a, a dog show person that has passed, who would you hmm. choose to have dinner with? Very simple. That was very, very simple. Flora McKenzie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love <laughs> Flora. She was wonderful. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I judged... Uh, I've judged in her uh, up in that uh, what's it called uh, Nova Scotia. Yeah. <laughs> I've judged yeah. there five, five times. I love it. Um, but and, I've, and and but the reason I say that is because Flora taught me a lot about uh, particularly 
uh, Shih Tzu and also uh, Maltese and, and Pekingese. You know, uh, I'm kind of known as a Pekingese picker. I, I, I've, uh, I, I judged, you know, I don't know if you know the, the Pekingese uh, breeder in, in England, um, Yaki, Yaki, anyway, uh, they, in one year, uh, wait there, I was gonna, I was gonna try to, you know, it's Y-A-N-K-E-E, -E. um, it's, in one year, I gave a best in show to um, one of their dogs in in Australia, two, in two places in Australia, but different dogs that they'd sent to Australia. And I gave another one in uh, a best in group to one in, in Finland or somewhere like that. And then, and this is the same breeder. They just produce these absolutely magnificent Pekingese. Um, you know, when you pick them up, they pick correctly up and their faces, the whole lot, you know, so well, you know, lovely small male, you know, who's just, you know, arrogant as hell and sound <laughs> as sound. So, you know, I, 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 I like Pekingese and, but it's amazing how somebody has implanted on that. The other one who, and so she, she taught me a lot about what, you know, about the, the coated breeds. Um, she, she knew her coated breeds well. Many people don't know coated breeds, I don't think. They, you know, because they basically don't go over the dogs so much. You know, I always remember Flora telling me um, when she, you know, she put the, I think it was a Shih Tzu on the table, and she said, okay. She went over the dog, and she said, I know exactly how it's going to move. And she told me how it's going to move, and it moved that way. You know, it, it, she didn't need to see it move to know how it's going to move because she knew the structure, etc. So that's you know uh, that's why I, I really appreciated her, and uh, you know she was a great a great great person, um, and because uh, she was a New Zealander, you know that. I did not know she that. came from New Zealand, and she she uh, she was a stewardess on the planes, and. Um, and her, her, the husband, uh, he was the pilot. But she, she, um, I judged with her in New Zealand, in Australia, in all over the world. I've judged with her. Uh, but she, she's a, she's a, she's a real great person. Oh, we, we loved her. She was great. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we look a little crazy, but she was great. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was part of the fun of her. Was she was. <laughs> I, I always remember. Um, being picked up at uh, what's that airport in Nova Scotia? Uh, it's the international airport there. Um, anyway, Halifax. Near, uh, Halifax, yes. So she picked me up, and you know it was in the middle of winter, and uh, the, the, the snow and ice and everything. And she was going along about a hundred miles an hour, <laughs> trying. <laughs> I thought, oh, you know, will we ever make it? <laughs> Yeah, but no, a great person. There are so many, many great people like that. You know, I, I do like, to a degree, the European shows because you get a lot more judges. You know, I've, I've judged uh, several shows in Finland, for example, and in other parts. But in Finland, there's one show that had 170 judges. You know, over, you know there was, I think, something like 7,000 dogs or something. But it, basically, 100, because you could only do... Um, in Finland, 65 dogs a day. Um, and so, you know, you had uh, lots of judges. And, you know, so it's very, very, it's very nice because then you can sit and talk to really specialist judges. Mm -hmm. Another one who I'd like to uh, have uh, dinner with, Hans Lettinen. I don't oh. know if you know Hans. Yeah, yeah Hans, Hans would have been one of your European judges telling you what to, how to fix things. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> he was a great guy. I, I really liked him as well. He, he really did a lot of... Uh, uh, good things for the dog world i think you know um he may have been a bit bit you know rough bit whatever but he actually i think did had it all the good things in mind um and uh, he had some good dogs as well um you know he had some good terriers and things like that in his day so you know i enjoyed those um but uh, yeah so that, that would be two of the people floor of course harry smith i really enjoyed as well, um, being around him. I know it's, it's getting late there. I'm sorry. One last question for you. 
If you could give advice to the 20 year old Robert Dawson, what advice would you give him? Um, I think that the biggest uh, advice I would give is to do what I've done, but do it better. Because in many cases, what I did, like for example, went overseas, I learned things from many people, but I was always a little bit apprehensive. I am not your you know, big gregarious person. I, I tend, to, tend to sit and listen to things. I think in the judging area and in the dog world area, I should have been a bit more proactive uh, um, in doing those things um, in the sense of understanding where I want to be. Um, sometimes I think I fell into things rather than necessarily plan them out which is not that bad, but um, I think in today's world, it's really a bit more of a planning things out, making sure you will get what you want and what you think is needed quicker. Um, you know, um, it's not easy. It's, I think it wasn't easy. It's never been easy for doing any of these things, but it's, it's getting harder. Um, the realities of life are there's less people involved in dogs now there's less dog shows there's less you know therefore there's less appointments and less things so you really need to be a bit more uh, outward going a bit more noticed um i've tended to do things but i think maybe i just do it a bit, bit harder a bit more and in, in try to get there um yeah that, that's what i think how i advise myself at that time I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying that I've done everything right. In fact, I'm not really honest, so. But the things that I would like to have done better, I should have done better. Mm. Well, we've noticed you, Bob. So don't worry about that part of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I, I must say, I must say, I have enjoyed coming to Canada. I've been, actually, I think I can't remember the first time. I must have come to Canada maybe twenty years ago. Um, yeah, yeah I, I once did a very strange set of shows. I did three shows in Vancouver area, I think with Donna. Donna's another person, but she hasn't passed. But, uh, um, but she, she's another person I've got, got on, Donna Cole. You know, well, I did three. Before, I used to use the same judges a lot, and they would have yes. the West yeah, so I, Coast. Yeah, so I did, I did three shows in... Um, in Vancouver, I think. Then I did three shows in Columbus, Ohio, or somewhere like that, some some place in the US. And then I did another three shows the following weekend. I think it was in um, it was in Toronto area. Um, uh, what's her name? Um, the uh, in Toronto. Was that the uh, early show? The Erie Lake. Oh, 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 Erie Shores. I think you were, I think you were talking about, I think you did the trade X shows, which was lower mainland. And I yes. think then you came east and I think you may have judged the Credit Valley show, one of our last shows of the year. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was it. Yeah. Was it a really yeah. relatively big show? Yeah. yeah. I think it was Credit Valley then. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I've, I've, done quite, I've done quite a lot of shows in Canada, in all places. I like the, I like actually the Red Deer. Yeah. Sure. You know, I did Red Deer when they only had, you know, we had three days of shows and uh, three judges or something like that. It was a very, you know, I think 300 dogs. And that was maybe 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I did it, I've done it, I think, four times. And every time I've been there, every second or third year, they've got virtually double their numbers. The last time I went there, their show was really quite number huge. They had quite a large number of dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, in Red, you, know, Red, you know, Red Deer, of course, is in the middle of the two, you know, Edmonton and uh, and uh, Calgary. But I really, I really love those people there. They, they, it's a, you know, so I think it's four times I've done that show. Yeah, they have fun out there. Yeah, yeah it's a good, it, they're a good, 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 good lot of people. But that's what you get in most places. Most places there are good lots of people who are, whose only concern is to have 
a, a, you know, a nice show and, and not, uh, you know, too much of hassles and things. That's important. For sure. And also for the judge. <laughs> Yeah. I won't keep you any longer, Bob. I know it. I know it's getting late there. I really appreciate that you put this time aside for us. Uh, it's good to see you and catch up, and uh, let the let our dog world over here know what you're doing, what you're up to, since we since you can't leave and judge over here right now. But no. hopefully, our world will open back up again soon, and we'll get to see everybody again. So. Yeah, we hope so too. I think that's that's very very important. Okay, good. All right, Bob. Well, you have a good Thank night. You very much. And uh, Thank you. we'll talk to you soon. Well, thank you, Bob. It was good to see you. It looks like you're keeping yourself busy during this COVID time. Um, if you like what we're seeing here, or you're, we're doing here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button. If you want to send me a message or ask me some questions, go to dogshowtips at gmail.com. Or if you just want to find out what's happening in Will's world, go to willalexander.net. Until next time, thanks. <laughs>